Alabama has produced a ton of star wide receivers over the years with guys such as Julio Jones, Amari Cooper, Calvin Ridley, and most recently, Devontae Smith. Jerry Judy has always been a big time player as he was a five star recruit, a superstar player at Alabama, and one of the most promising rookie wide receivers in the NFL last year. But how did he become a star player to begin with, you may be asking. Today we're going to talk about the inspiring story of Jerry Judy, his rise to fame, and why he is a future star in the NFL. But first, be sure to give the video a like if you want to support what I'm doing here on YouTube, subscribe if you love college football, suggest what topic I should do next, and turn on post notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now let's get started and talk about the rise of Jerry Judy. Everyone knows Judy as the five-star Bama star who is a young and up-and-coming player for the Denver Broncos, but many don't know what motivated him to become the player he is today. Sadly, his sister tragically died of a rare medical condition when she was seven years old, and this was very tough for Jerry. He said, quote, it wasn't easy, but at the same time, she was suffering from all the things she was going through, like the things she couldn't do. She couldn't walk, she couldn't talk, but now I feel like she has a better place where she can do what she wants to do. She can walk, she can talk, she can be whatever she wants. Now she's not suffocating on this earth. Obviously, this bugged him a lot, and that's a very tragic and hard thing to go through. But this did motivate him to become the player he is today. It also wasn't the only struggle in the family, as his mother actually moved to the States when she was 14 years old and had it pretty tough as well. She worked tirelessly at various jobs, which included making parachutes at an army factory, serving as a nurse at an assisted living facility, selling blankets and jewelry out of her car, and she did that to make sure there was always food on her children's plate, and sometimes she would even go hungry. So she made a lot of sacrifice for Jerry, and he obviously picked up on that, and that motivated him deeply. He didn't start playing football until 7th grade in Coral Springs, and he was the youngest of three kids for most of his childhood. But at first, his mom wasn't super happy about the idea of him playing football, as she was worried about his health. She would eventually give in, as a lot of parents do, and he fell in love with the game. Plus, he was obviously good at what he did. There was a story of his coach taking a few players to some camps, and it also included Calvin Ridley, actually. Jerry was 15 years old at the time, and he so desperately wanted to join the older players that he ran up to the van and they had to let him in. They went to a couple of SEC schools, and this is when Judy started to blow up. And he started to play like all those older kids in the camp. And the coach's favorite part of that story is that Judy sat on the floor, just proving how bad he wanted to be there and how much football meant to him. He eventually became a legend around the area and was one of the most lethal wide receivers in all of college football. Soon, Jerry was joining Ridley and all the other neighborhood kids every weekend, going to the local park, practicing routes in the sand. On weeknights, he'd go through his homework and then tear up the backyard grass with ladder drills, and he actually had a self-imposed bedtime at 9 p.m. For me, I struggled to go to bed early, and I don't know many people who can do that, let alone a high schooler. He wanted to be elite, and he acted like it, and Calvin Ridley was the perfect person and player to model his game after. Judy knew that football would be his way out, as when he was growing up, the idea of college was never really supposed to happen. He was just going to play football and then work a 9 to 5, because his family didn't have money to send him to school. But one day he realized he could play football in college and get paid for it. This motivated him even more. Also, don't judge him too hard for this because this happened when he was in middle school and he did not know you could get a scholarship to play football, but as I said, it motivated him deeply. The first school that was interested in him was Cincinnati, and then from there he blew up and the rest is history. When he was in high school, his sister tragically died as we all know, and the saddest part is that he always said he was going to make it to the league so he could have the money to get her better treatment and be able to save her life. And honestly, that kind of moved me, and it's just really tough to hear that, and I'm a big Jerry Judy fan for that. He eventually became a five-star recruit, and with his goal of making it to the league, he ended up choosing Alabama over Florida. He said, quote, Alabama has great coaches, great players, and it's a winning team. I feel I can go there and make plays. I'll have one year with Calvin, and he'll show me the ropes. Alabama was definitely a great school for him to go to, and his lead recruiter was Billy Napier at Alabama, but I do have to think that Calvin Ridley going there definitely played a part in why he went there. According to 24-7 Sports, Judy was a five-star recruit, the number three wide receiver, and the 21st best player in the class of 2017. He came into Alabama with a lot of high expectations, and he was joined by another freshman stud by the name of Henry Ruggs. He won the MVP of the Alabama Spring Game with five catches for 134 yards and five touchdowns. That's a pretty big game. He was apparently disappointed with how his career started though, and apparently he was super quiet and shy in practice, and he said he was just going to work his tail off. He was a step ahead of everyone at one point, and Judy amassed 14 catches for 264 yards and two touchdowns during his true freshman season. 
Now that Ridley was gone, he was seen as the next man up, and that is exactly what he did. Judy caught six touchdown passes in Alabama's first three games of the 2018 season, and that included 136 yards and two touchdowns against Ole Miss. He had 135 yards and two touchdowns against Arkansas, then he set a career high with 147 yards and a touchdown against Missouri. He had 139 yards and a touchdown in Alabama's loss to Clemson in the 2019 College Football Playoff Championship, and that definitely was a tough game for Alabama fans and players. He would set the record for yards per catch at Alabama, and was both a first-team All-SEC selection and a first-team All-American, as he caught 68 passes for 1,315 yards and 14 touchdowns. He was pegged as a preseason first-team All-American and a Heisman sleeper going into 2019, but the season didn't go as well as many probably would have thought. After a hot start, he cooled off for a bit, but once Tua went down with an injury, his numbers fell. He finished the regular season with 959 yards receiving and 9 touchdowns and was once again a first-team All-SEC selection, and part of that was because Devontae Smith broke out. He would prove his worth though at 200 yards in their Citrus Bowl win over Michigan, and proved that it wasn't Mac Jones' fault for his numbers dropping off. And he also left Alabama with a great performance and one that would go down in the history books. He became one of the most decorated wide receivers in Alabama Crimson Tide history and declared for the 2020 NFL Draft, where many saw him as the best wide receiver prospect, and he was neck and neck with CeeDee Lamb. But he was not the first wide receiver taken, as Henry Ruggs, his teammate, was taken by the Las Vegas Raiders, and then with the 15th overall pick, Judy was taken by the Denver Broncos. He was seen as the future star wide receiver of the team, but he would get a chance to prove himself a little bit earlier than many anticipated, as they lost star wide receiver Cortland Sutton for the year. It would be Jerry Judy, Noah Fant, and Tim Patrick as the main targets, but who exactly would be throwing them the ball? Drew Locke was hyped up to be the savior for the Broncos, but he struggled with consistency and injuries, so both Brett Rippon and Jeff Driscoll got chances to play, and the Broncos would struggle in 2020. Despite all the dysfunction, Judy had a pretty solid rookie year. He caught more than four passes in his first three games, and then caught his first career touchdown pass against the Jets. Yeah, I know it's the Jets, but it's still a touchdown. He showed his superstar abilities against the Falcons as he caught seven passes for 125 yards and a touchdown, and that's when he started to emerge. He would cool off again towards the end of the year, but in his last two games, he proved why he was the future of the team. He caught six passes for 61 yards against the Chargers, and then five more catches for 140 yards and a touchdown against the Las Vegas Raiders and his former teammate Henry Ruggs. For his rookie year, he finished with 52 receptions for 856 yards and three touchdowns. Looking forward to 2021, it is unknown if the Broncos will draft a quarterback, but I personally think that Drew Locke will be back for at least one more season, and I really hope he succeeds. As many of you know, he is my favorite player of all time. Cortland Sutton will also be back, and I wonder how that will affect his numbers. And we could also see KJ Hamler emerge this year, but I think Judy is the real deal and has a chance to be one of the great ones when it's all said and done. It's not just because of his abilities, but what motivates him. I'm a huge fan of him after seeing what he has been through, and you cannot help but be a fan of Jerry Judy and root for him to succeed. But what do you guys think? If you're a Broncos fan or an Alabama fan, let me know what you think of Jerry Judy, and if you know a guy with an inspiring story or another NFL player I should take a look at next, please be sure to let me know down in the comment section. Also, any idea related to college football, put down in the comment section as well. And before you go, be sure to give the video a like if you want to support this channel and help this video get to more people. Subscribe if you love college football and you haven't already. Suggest what topic I should do next and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my video I did about the 2019 Alabama wide receiver room and why they are the greatest unit in college football history. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.